So as we know, the teen years are full of peer pressure, and it's not just for kids. Parents often fear their children aren't achieving enough or are missing out on opportunities, and that anxiety can strain the parent-child relationship. Teen counselor Sherry Gazit says there are ways to keep all of that in check, which is what we want. Welcome back. Thank you for having um, me. You say that we, we sometimes, maybe even often, parent from a place of fear and anxiety, which looking back I can relate to. Tell me what you mean by that. So we take on all of these things we hear from the media about our kids need to achieve, they need to have a 4.0 plus or else they're not going to be successful. They're not going to get into college and we know from this college admission scandal that just came through that even the people who are, you know, affluent and who are successful themselves are panicking that their kids are just not going to be successful. Right. If, and that message is coming. I mm -hmm. mean, when I was growing up, if you had a college degree, you got a job, nobody talked about it was going to be hard to find a job. Right. Mm -hmm. Now that's inculcated how competitive the school process right. is. Such and such school has a 10% acceptance rate, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you not take that right. in? Right. Right. So I think it's just important to look at your own child and to worry about their mental well being before anything else. And just know that they're going to find their own path to success. It doesn't have to go on this one track that everybody talks about. True so enough. And if we feel that, we can assure them of right. that. Right. Absolutely. Because we get so panicked as parents and our kids feel that, even if we try to not put that on them, um, they pick up on it. Like physiologically, our kids feel what we are feeling. Boy, I think that's really true. Anxiety is so contagious. Mm -hmm. And you don't even have to say anything, right? right it right. can be other ways that you're um, communicating this. So what is the effect on the parent-child relationship if the parent is quite anxious and, and maybe trying to push or expand the envelope mm -hmm. for the, the child and the child's receiving this? Right. So there's so many different ways that this can kind of, um, you know, play out. Um, one way is that there's a disconnect because the child doesn't come to the parent anymore for guidance and support because the parent just ramps up that anxiety instead of toning it down. So it's really important that we realize that our anxiety makes our kids' anxiety even worse and it can snowball. Um, the other thing that I see is that the kids just act like everything is fine so their parents aren't more anxious but then behind the scenes they're making choices that are not great not and we good don't want skills. that right because right. if they're trying to manage our emotions that's taking mm -hmm. on a whole role that that is not theirs, right. not a burden for them to carry. So you talk about a term called child contingent self-esteem. What is yes. that? Yes. So this is where our self-esteem as parents is dependent upon our kids' achievements. Oh, oh. So you okay. hear this one. Not parent, good. Right, not good. <laughs> when you parent, um, like when parents get together and they start talking about how their kids are doing, it's about what they've achieved. And it, it's just, it's a really unhealthy relationship for the parent and child. And even for parents who are trying to support each other, for them just to kind of one-up each other on what their kids are doing. It's just not healthy all around. Well, give me some tips on this because this does happen. I know mm -hmm. people will get together. Maybe you haven't seen each other in a while and you ask about kids mm -hmm. and that is where the conversation goes. Mm -hmm. And not everybody is at a good place at that moment. Maybe the next dinner you'll be the one who's right, not in a good right. place. Uh -huh. So what are some other ways for us to describe what our kids are like mm -hmm. and what they're doing without getting into that. Yeah. I think to talk about what they're excited about instead of what they're achieving. So um, for one of my daughters, she loves art, so I might talk about the latest thing that she was drawing or um, something that she did, you know, that related to art, but not necessarily her achievement or her grades. Um, just talk about who they are, not as what, a person. As a person, yeah. I think that's a really good tip that might be more relaxing for mm -hmm. people because you don't want to be the one who's made to feel bad or to make other people right. feel bad. Um, so there are consequences for the health of parents. There's mm -hmm. consequences for anybody really who's under a lot of anxiety. What kinds right. of things might we be talking about? Um, so the consequences for parents specifically? Yes. Um, so really that we take on all of the burden of our kids' emotions too. So whereas we were talking a second ago about our kids trying yep. to manage our emotions, it goes both ways. And we need to think of ourselves as not the controller of our kids' emotions and their achievements, more of the guidance and support. So, um, you know, if our kid is sad or anxious, don't jump down in the trenches with them. You know, stay up there, stay calm, and 
and right. um, you know manage your own emotions on your own time and just be there for them. That, I think that's so important and that's a hard thing to do as a parent mm -hmm. because you hurt when they hurt and it's right. hard not to get into it with them but then you're of not much help exactly, yeah. to yourself right. or you're anybody else. Too, yeah. Please put your, max, your oxygen mask <laughs> right. on before trying to help anybody else. All right. Okay, so things that we need to do. Prioritize joy and mental wellness. Yes, for sure. Overachievement. Overachievement. And, and make thing, sure we communicate that. Yes, and it will, um, if they're feeling joyous and they're feeling creative and all of that, the success will come. Like, look at all of our big success stories in our society, in our society like Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, right. Oprah. Um, it's all because they were excited. It wasn't about their GPA. And, and it wasn't about a particular outcome at no. some point. Mm -hmm. And so stop focusing on GPA and achievements. Now, this, I think, is really hard for high school parents mm -hmm. who are helping kids do their college apps. And they all know from, I don't know, somewhere in the womb that right. they need to have a good GPA and a great essay and extracurriculars. Mm -hmm. So how do we, you know, sort of navigate that line between, yeah, we know they do need some of these mm -hmm. things to, to apply to college, but not make their whole life about it. Right. So we want them to be excited about learning. That's the bottom line, not about the GPA. And um, so what we really need to do is just stop talking about it all the time. Don't make it the question we're always asking our kids. Right. You know, how was your grade? How was your test? How'd you do on your test? Right, exactly. yeah. Um, so to get them away from that, start just giving them space to find things that they love and enjoy. And that's what we talk to our kids about. And that's how that becomes a focus instead of their GPA. Exactly, and at that point, we can comment on their creativity, their passion, mm -hmm. you know, personal qualities that they'll always have as right. opposed to an ephemeral grade this year that won't mean right. anything to you in 10 years. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so if, if you, as the parent, are patient zero with the anxiety mm -hmm. you're starting this, do you think that's something that we might want to consider talking to the parents in our group about mm -hmm. so that we can form kind of a team of people who right. are trying to yes. lift anxiety away from our kids? Yes, exactly. So with your support group or a therapist, whoever you need, um, start talking about it and realize that everybody's going through these feelings. Right. And maybe we could all it. try to exactly. do better so that yes. they don't just go to so-and-so's house and hear mm -hmm. the same and thing. And hear it, yes. Uh -huh. Right, exactly. <laughs> That's great advice. Thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. it.